Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the differences between NAT and ELP. Now, this is a topic uh, where most of the people have found getting confused. They, uh, you know, they just mix both of them and they do not understand when to use which one. So, uh, quickly with proper example, I would like to explain you what are the differences between them and I hope uh, you know, hereafter you would not be confused which one to be used when. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now on this uh, uh, slide, you see that on the, on the left hand side, I'm uh, you know I'm showing you a setup. There is a VPC. You have got uh, within that two avail. I mean, there are two availability zones. Basically, two public subnets and two private subnets spread across two availability zones. Why should we do uh, or why should we spread subnets across two availability zones because we would want to have our environment highly available in case one availability zone goes down even in that case our application should continue to run right that's why we spread our vpc across two availability zones and we put the subnets across the two availability zones and of course based on our need we would want to have few things public and few things private that's why we keep uh, you know public and private in both all right i i have a detailed tutorial uh, which you can look at in case you want to understand how to create vpc from scratch the link for that is given uh, in the description now uh, we are comparing nat and elp nat is network address translation elp is elastic load balancing now let us understand the difference between the two if you see in this particular architecture we have elp this is elp and we have nat here as well nat gateway okay you can see that uh, we have got uh, you know servers uh, let's say our web servers running in the private subnet so they don't have public ip but from here our website is getting served and we have put an elb in the public subnet so let's understand the work of what they do right now uh, suppose if we don't have elb we will have to keep our web servers into the public subnet because only the instances which are there in the public subnet they would be reachable directly from the internet right we have discussed uh, in detail about this but we but we do not want to first thing we do not want to keep our servers in the uh, in the public subnet also we want a managed service uh, in the you know we want a managed service which which should be facing the facing the public why do we want to do that tomorrow when uh, you know when a lot of load comes to your website the elb uh, expands automatically we have already discussed in detail in another tutorial that what elb does but let's understand quickly elb does two important things first the incoming traffic from the internet it accepts and it distributes among the instances which are there which are registered to it okay so first is distribution of the traffic second is it also continuously does the health checks of these instances if any of the instance is unhealthy it will stop sending traffic to that particular instance so let's understand in case of nat in case of elb the traffic is originated from internet right and coming to the coming to your website or coming to your to your environment right so it is originated from internet and it is served by these instances so you keep elb in the public subnet it accepts the traffic and it distributes it to the n number of instances now elb can be public and can be private as well sometimes you keep elb between your web tier and your app tier right because you want to decouple both of them we'll talk more about this later but you can choose to keep your elb in the public subnet or in the private subnet also if you see I have, I have positioned ELB in such a way that it is getting inside this subnet and this one, right, in both. So ideally, you would want or you should go ahead and keep your, uh, you know, create your ELB in two subnets. What happens is when you give two subnets, which are there across two availability zones, ELB internally launches uh, nodes in both the, you know, in both the subnets. And that gives you highly, you know, highly available environment. In case availability zone goes down completely, still my ELB would not be down. That's the whole thing. I mean, you don't have to go and maintain those internal instances, right? Uh, ELB takes care of that. So ELB is a managed service and it is highly available in nature. Only thing you have to take care is while creating it, you should choose two subnets which are there in two different availability zones, right? So let's understand. So what is it doing? It is doing the work of reverse proxy. Uh, people from outside are requesting, are requesting, uh, you know, are sending traffic to an instance, but that instance is not this one, rather it is inside. So it just accepts and passes it on. So that's why 
those in, these uh, instances in the private subnet even when they don't have private ip they are able to they are able to serve your website right okay um, all right now let's see the other part let's say uh, people uh, are requesting a website uh, the request comes up to your uh, you know private instances now your instances want to call a third party api maybe a weather api a currency api they want to call that right as part of your logic now it would not work if they don't have internet connectivity so if you want to allow if you want to allow that request which is originating from your private instances should be able to reach internet you make use of nat network address translation this is similar to your forward proxy how all of you uh, you know see it in your office that in your office all your uh, personal desktop or personal machines will only have private ips they don't have public ip but still you are able to access internet because of the proxy server right same way it works here so all the internet bound traffic from the private instances goes to the nat gateway and the nat gateway sends it out to the internet and gets the reply back and gives to these private instances so very important thing to understand here the traffic which is originated towards internet by the private machines goes via nat instance right and then the reply comes back the traffic which is originated from internet and for these uh, you know for these private instances or for your web servers that comes via elb so i have uh, summarized it here if you understand elb is works as reverse proxy nat instances works as uh, nat instance or nat gateway works as forward proxy uh, you should always place uh, nat instances or nat gateways only in the public subnet you cannot keep it in the private subnet okay whereas your elb can be in public or private both uh, we understood in the direction of the traffic you should always think the direction in which the traffic is originated right based on that you would never get confused uh, both of these are managed services but nat instances live in one subnet whereas elb if you choose correctly can span across multiple subnets right now uh, so please take care of this and one more thing quickly between nat i mean for nat there you have two options nat instance and nat gateway so earlier it used to be nat instances and it was a uh, user's responsibility to create that instance and manage uh, you know that it remains up you have to choose a particular uh, ami and then you know set it up now but it had a lot of restrictions in terms of bandwidth it always depended on the type of the instance which you have chosen so after some time like some time back aws launched nat gateway which is a managed service you do not have to worry about its availability because it is highly it, it is highly available within one availability zone now but now that is something important to understand your nat gateway can live only in one availability zone only one subnet you can choose right so uh, for a, for a really highly available environment you should ideally run two nat gateways or one nat gateway in every availability zone so in this scenario if i want to make it really highly available i should have one nat gateway here in this availability zone one i should have another nat gateway here right because nat gateway doesn't span across availability zone or across subnets it doesn't span right elb does a span so remember that that is a very important difference uh, in addition to that nat gateway support bandwidth up to 10 gbps so you don't have to worry much right you don't have to you are not limited by the you know by the uh, by the instance type or anything also you don't have to maintain any security groups for this you can read on this particular url all the other differences as well i'll put this in the description as well all right guys uh, i thank you for watching this uh, i also have created a url a google forms url you can go ahead and submit your request for specific topics on which you want me to make videos uh, uh, i've been off and could not put a lot of videos recently but a lot more is coming trust me and i hope that if you like this you'll go ahead and share this with your friends i hope this is clear if you have any doubts please go ahead and ask please subscribe to the channel and remain updated thank you bye bye